I am a RAPID program fellow at the Picardy International Center. RAPID stands for Research and Policy in Infectious Disease Dynamics. I work on models of zoonotic infections, so infections that are transmitted from animals to people, um, and trying to understand the processes that allow viruses to be transmitted between species and um, also the patterns that we expect when a new pathogen is found in a new species. It's a very broad question, but I would say that um, mathematics, I view mathematics as a tool, um, and I, I don't necessarily consider myself a mathematician, but I def definitely consider myself a modeler and a, maybe an applied mathematician. Um, so mathematics is useful in a couple of ways. Um, for one thing, it's a way of making a set of assumptions and following them through to their logical conclusion um, and being explicit about what those assumptions are. And so that's a very useful tool for scientific thinking because we're always trying to take a set of assumptions and make predictions um, and then test those things in reality. So mathematics is a very good way of taking a conceptualization of a problem and then seeing how it plays out um, based on your assumptions about how that process is working and then comparing that to um, what you actually observe in the real world. Okay, so I said that I work on um, infections transmitted from animals to people. Uh, examples of infections like this are um, monkeypox virus, which is related to smallpox, but is transmitted um, from wild animals to people in uh, parts of Central Africa. Um, or Nipah virus, which I've worked on a lot, uh, which is transmitted um, from bats to people. Um, and both of these diseases are sort of unique in that they can, once they're in people, they transmit, but they don't actually transmit very well. Um, and so they're sort of diseases that are candidates for um, potential, diseases that are threats um, potentially for causing much larger epidemics, particularly when um, evolutionary processes are considered. Um, and so mathematics has been very useful to us um, as a tool, in part because these are very rare events. They are very um, data limited in a lot of ways, um, but they're potentially very important. And so mathematics is a way to um, both understand how the data that are available were produced, the processes that produced them, um, and make assumptions about how those processes were occurring, um, and then um, also to sort of ask what if, what if scenarios. We're currently trying to understand human to human transmission of both monkeypox and Nipah virus. We're using mathematical models of the transmission process um, that are characterized in the, in the locations where um, these viruses are actually seen. And we can ask questions then about um, well, what would happen if this changed? Or what would happen if that changed? What would happen if instead of being in rural um, Congo, monkeypox showed up in Kinshasa? Um, and is there something um, about the, the contact network um, of, of people in the city versus in rural areas that would actually change so that the virus would be able to spread more effectively? Um, I think we've learned a lot of things. One of, the, one of the most fundamental things is that we've learned that very simple rules about interactions can produce very complex patterns. Um, and mathematics is a very easy, simple way to write down a set of rules. Um, and you can illustrate that very complex patterns can follow from simple rules, um, which is very important because um, in trying to understand biology, we're often dealing with very complex patterns, and we don't know in a lot of cases whether um, the complex patterns are a result of complex interactions um, or whether they're a result of random events um, or whether they're actually sort of deterministically produced by simple interactions occurring at a much larger scale. And so mathematics allows you to cross scales um, and it allows you to formally um, come up, you can come up with alternative models for these um, types of hypotheses regarding biological systems, um, and then you can make predictions from the different models and match that up to what's observed.